And of course, we are going to be starting off with the Netherlands versus New Zealand. Uh, so we can just have a look at how they are doing currently uh, in this round. So uh, you can see here with the match stages there, Netherlands are 2-0 uh, currently up against New Zealand. So they do have that momentum going for them. Yeah, this is a really interesting match too as well. The Netherlands and New Zealand, whichever team wins this match advances into the next stage. But if it's 4-4, if it's a tied, New Zealand advances. So uh, another thing too is they'll most likely face China in the top 16 and China's been doing very well as well. So, you know, the Netherlands is currently up 2-0 over New Zealand, but, you know, the Netherlands has to make sure they get five wins. So they have three more that they need today. And this match here is going to be really important to determine you know, if New Zealand starts to swing that momentum back towards them or if the Netherlands makes it just a little bit uh, closer for them to uh, to push this week out and move on. Yeah, they've had a good start here and they effectively have the advantage now uh, with that good start of the two wins. So we'll have to see if these two players can uh, move it forward for their teams, whether the Netherlands are going to go up 3-0 or whether New Zealand are going to be taking back their first game in this set so we can have a look now at what players are going to be uh, running in this in in this game that we're going to be seeing here uh, so uh, yeah we're going to be having a look at alex's team to start off with for new zealand and it is just going to be that zashin coming out yeah zashin incineroar urshifu uh reggie lucky and amoongus so this is one of the most standard teams i've seen in the format pretty much the six most popular pokemon they all work so well together so it's a team that obviously works very very well um and Alex, too, a great player, top eight in Oceania Players Cup 3, so a really nice achievement for him last year. Uh, you know, this team, it makes a lot of sense. You still have that Firewater Grass Core Zashin when you position it next to a Fake Out user or anything that can, you know, that Amoongus with that redirection can really get up a lot of powerful hits. So, you know, whoever Alex ends up facing uh, in terms of the six Pokemon on his opponent's side, he's still in a pretty comfortable position with a lot of his matchups. Yeah, when you're going into matches these important, you do want to be bringing uh, very solid Pokemon into these matches. And these are very six very solid Pokemon that we have seen uh, perform time and time again. Uh, so we'll have to see if they are able to perform against this Kyogre team that is going to be coming out from Nick. But for once, it is not going to be a Torn Ogre team. It is going to be a Talonflame instead of that Tornadus. Yeah, Talonflame, a really interesting pick here with Kyogre, Serena, Entei, Amoongus, and Reggie Alecki to go along with it. Uh, interesting too, because last week we had multiple of those Calm Mind leftovers, Kyogre, and then in instead of that Torn Ogre with the Choice Scarf typically, but even Choice Scarf could be run on Entei, so this could still be a Choice Specs Kyogre. Could be a couple of different things here, but you know, it looks like, you know, having Serena and having this Kyogre and this team that can go really fast, especially with the Tailwind from Talonflame boosted, uh, early, especially when it's at full health with that Gale Wings ability. It's going to be really interesting to see exactly how Nick kind of has to go from here, because if he can get himself faster than the uh, Zashin on the opposing side, he's going to be in a really nice position. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to be doing with your Kyogre. Uh, get it fast on the opponent, get your water spouts off, hopefully at full HP to do the most amount of damage. And Talonflame is definitely going to be a Pokemon that can do that, just like Tornadus could. Slightly faster than the Tornadus, so you do have the slight edge on that first turn to get the Tailwinds up. Uh, can still go for the Hurricanes, it's going to be a lot weaker than the, the Tornadus, but does have access to some nice tricks. A Talonflame does get access to Faint, which is going to be very good for breaking through white guards that could come out to stop the water spouts from the Kyogre, uh, which is something that the, uh, the Tornadus can't do. Also has access to Quick Guard potentially to stop any of the priority moves coming out. Uh, but you do also have that Serena uh, coming out to protect from the priority moves as well. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting pick with the Talent Flame. And, and I'm surprised we haven't seen it as much as we potentially could have done paired with that Kyogre, especially with the faint potential that could come out. Yeah, and I think even just having a fire type out there can be really nice. You know, even though there is the Kyogre on this team, so any fire type attacks that it has would be weakened by the rain if it is in that position. But even still putting, you know, putting a little bit of pressure onto a Zashin who, you know, you it may not be running a fire type move just because of the utility talent flame can have. But if it secretly is carrying one for something like a Zashin that's not going to love taking a fire type attack, uh, then it, you know, then it can be put in a really nice position here, especially if this is that choice specs Kyogre that can run really fast. Um, with that Tailwind, but is most importantly a really strong hitter, while the Entei can carry that Choice Scarf instead and just put itself, you know, still be able to move fast, still have that Tailwind utility, and then the fast Regieleki in the back as well, where if you put a Tailwind with a Regieleki, literally nothing is going to go faster than that. <laughs> Just slap on a choice golf on the Regieleki as well, why not, <laughs> to make it as fast as possible. So, yeah, it's definitely some, some interesting teams coming out of, out of these these players here. So we're going to jump into the game now to see uh, what they're going to be bringing into, uh, into this game for us here. So, yes, yeah, de definitely interesting having something like the Talonflame 
Uh, over this one, it definitely helps out against the Zashin, especially with that extra fire, fire typing. Uh, Zashin does naturally outspeed Talonflame, but Zashins do tend to be run slightly more bulky, slightly slower. That could come into, into play if the Talonflame is running max speed, because a lot of Zashin players don't opt to try and outspeed the Talonflame. Uh, at least the base speed of the Talon Flame, and you could potentially even get the jump on the Zashin, get that fire, mo fire move up before the Zashin would even be able to attack. Uh, if you get keep your Gale Wings intact, you definitely get to get that Tailwinds going uh, with the Talon Flame, so you do have to be careful of whether that is broken or not. If you're facing down something like the Regieleki and your Gale Wings has been broken with no Tailwinds, then you're not going to be able to set it back up. Uh, one, another one of the disadvantages that Talonflame does have over the Tornadus, if the Galewings is broken, you don't get that priority Tailwind anymore, and it is a bit weaker than that Tornadus as well, but definitely does have some nice things going for it. I think another thing that's important too is the item on Nyx Amoongus here. You know, because we can see the Amoongus, we have that peak behind the screen where it is holding that Aqua Berry, so it would be nice against that Entei. But if we are dealing with the Amoongus here and they're going for Spores and they're going for Rage Powders and trying to protect their partner Pokemon, you know, there are some Pokemon that aren't going to be affected by that Spore or Rage Powder with the Rillaboom and the Serena on either side respectively. So there is going to be some interesting positioning here. If you are facing down a Rillaboom with your Amoongus, it's going to be kind of tough here. But going into game one our very first match of the day between nick and alex from new zealand and the netherlands so our leads are going to be showing here right now going to see exactly what both these trainers are bringing how they're going to defeat each other we see the talon flame and the ente coming out and then we also see from the other side after that shiny animation for that fun talon flame goes the reggie lucky and the amoongus quite an interesting lead match up here definitely trying to catch the zashian uh, with the two fire types coming out for the ente and the Talonflame, but Regieleki is in a pretty good position here. Facing down the Talonflame, going to be able to do a huge amount of damage to that. Amoongus, maybe not as much, uh, but we did get that sneak peek of the item uh, that was coming out uh, on the Amoongus. So actually a little bit safer than normal, normally an Amoongus would be in front of these two Pokemon. You could potentially get that Spore off, uh, unless you get taunted by the Talonflame, but definitely not if it's going to be switching out here. Yeah, Talonflame switches out, brings out the Serena instead, possibly trying to get a... Uh... Any pressure off of the field. A rain dance, though, from a Regieleki. Really nice move to see. That is, I think, the only water type move that Regieleki can learn. But it is going to be stopping these fire type moves coming out from either Pokemon. Entei goes for that Sacred Fire into the Regieleki. Does still a good amount of damage. Amoongus goes for the Spore, though, so no burn. But the safety goggles revealed on that Entei there. So a really nice item choice by Nick. Yeah, very interesting turn uh, turn one coming out here. Rain dance isn't something you see too often on the on the Regieleki, but it does pair well with the Urshifu uh, because you do boost up those surging strikes to really really hit hard. Uh, the rain could have been set up by the Kyogre waiting in the back, but it's just reducing the damage coming out from the fire type moves from the Entei. Um, and that Regieleki was able to take that Sacred Fire pretty comfortably. But the Safety Goggles is a very good item choice uh, for this Entei at the moment. Immune to the Spore for, with both Pokemon. The Serena is, is going to be a Grass type, it's going to be immune. And now with the Safety Goggles, the Entei doesn't really care about this Amoongus. So Amoongus is not really in the strongest position it would want to be in. It is going to be switching out here. Yeah, Amoongus swaps out for the Urshifu, who is going to be loving this rain and won't mind staring that Entei down. Serena could be rougher, though. Regieleki goes for that Electroweb. Going to do a nice little bit of damage to that Entei and a small amount to the Serena, but most importantly, it slows both of these Pokemon down. Nick wasn't able to get a Tailwind up, so making sure that Alex's Pokemon are faster is going to be really huge. Another Sacred Fire into the Regieleki gets it down to about 25% of its health with no burn again, while the U-turn from the Serena sends into that Urshifu and is going to bring that Serena back for whatever Nick has in the back could possibly be a couple of different Pokemon here. Could even be that Talon Flame to get the speed up again. So you can see the, the use of that Rain Dancer. Now Regieleki was able to survive two of those Sacred Fires and not getting burned either time as well means that Regieleki is still sticking around here facing down this Talon Flame. It does have, still have its Gale Wings intact, so it does have the potential to get that Tailwind up before the Regieleki would be able to go for any of its electric type attacks. But the Rain is really going to be helping out this Urshifu here. It's going to be able to pick up a knockout on either Pokemon with the Surging Strikes here. And even if the Serena would switch into that Surging Strikes, it's still going to hurt a, a lot with that Rain Boost as well, even if it would be a resisted hit. So, yeah, re really nice to turn one for uh, first couple of turns for Alex here. Rain Dance really coming into play already. Maybe may seem unnecessary, especially with the Kyogre in the back, but keeping the Regieleki around means that Tannin Flame is not going to be too safe in front of this Regieleki. It may have to just get that Tailwind up and just sacrifice itself because that Regieleki is still stuck around. 
Yeah, absolutely. Reggie Alecki actually switches out here, trying to protect itself a little bit, bringing that Amoongus back out that we saw. Can't really do a whole lot to this Entei, but now that Talonflame is on the field, could possibly be able to spore that slot. Urshifu goes for a protect here, though, so a very defensive switching play from Alex. Talonflame goes for the Tailwind, so that the Pokemon on Nick's side are going to be much faster without that slowing down from the Reggie Alecki. A Sacred Fire from the Entei goes into that protected Urshifu slot, so no damage coming from that point either. And now the Amoongus is facing down the, the Talonflame, which both of its attacks are going to do a lot of damage to this Amoongus and the safety goggles on the Entei. So a nice preserving the Regieleki for that Kyogre in the back. It's definitely going to be the best way of dealing with the Kyogre. So preserving the Regieleki definitely makes a lot of sense. But the Talonflame still has its Gale Wings intact here. I can just go for any of the flying moves it has, whether it's going to be the physical variant with the Brave Birds or potentially with the Hurricanes, which would be a, a lot more justifiable with the Kyogre on the team as well to make them 100% accurate. And even without the Kyogre switch, in at this point thanks to that rain dance though those hurricanes would be 100 percent accurate at this point so talonflame definitely has the potential for a lot of damage here yeah and this amoongus could be taking a lot of damage by using that rage powder to direct all of the attacks talonflame goes for a brave bird here so that is the move of choice and that does a ton of damage but not enough to knock out that amoongus and that talonflame takes a ton of recoil from that bulky amoongus the sacred fire goes into this amoongus who's going to eat that aqua berry that we saw in the team preview and take less damage but that is not even going to matter that is still enough to knock out this amoongus will allow for a switch in from alex but this urshifu is going to be able to get off a really massive move here with that surging strikes going to be able to knock out either of these pokemon it's going to have to depend on where they choose it is going to be that talonflame where one single surging <laughs> strike is enough to knock it out here so a great position from Alex to be able to get a Pokemon in for free and knock out that pesky Talonflame. Yeah, I think the Talonflame for Amoongus trade is pretty reasonable, uh, especially for Nick being able to get that switch into the Kyogre. You've got the Tailwind set up at this point. Uh, the Kyogres are usually trained to outspeed a Regieleki, so if it is trained as fast uh, en enough to be able to do that, it'll be a really good position for the Kyogre to come in and just click that Water Spout button at this point. Even Urshifu would be resisting it, would still take a huge amount of damage because its base special defense is so low. So yeah, re really nice position for, for Nick if that Kyogre is really speedy, but if it is not going to be uh, the speedy variant on the Kyogre and if they're opting for a bit more bulk, and then they're not going to be able to outspeed the Regieleki. So it uh, looks like the Kyogre is going to be coming in for Nick. That may indicate that it is going to be that bit speedier on the Kyogre, feeling confident in case that Regieleki did come in. So now you're in the position where you want to be. The Kyogre is in Tailwind. It is at full HP. It can just click that Water Spout button and do a huge amount of damage. Zashian is probably going to be knocked out by that Water Spout. Urshifu should be able to survive and respond back with a Surging Strikes, but maybe the combination of an attack from the Entei as well as the Water Spout would be enough to pick up the knockout on the Urshifu. And Sacred Fire won't do too much damage, especially in the rain and the resisted hit to the Urshifu. Uh, if there's any coverage on the Entei, maybe something like an Extreme Speed that may put the Urshifu into range of the Water Spout from the Kyogre. Uh, but if not, the Urshifu could potentially get that attack off with the Surging Strikes or the Close Combat into that Kyogre. And when you get the damage onto the Kyogre, you're not going to be able to knock out this session with the Water Spout anymore. Yeah, Zashin goes for a Protect here, though. Kyogre goes for Thunder, so it goes for that Thunder into the Urshifu slot, so that will take a really big chunk of damage. It is enough for that knockout here. So going to be really important to see, you know, maybe that Kyogre isn't Choice Scarfed. Entei goes for a Sacred Fire into that Zashin slot. I'm not going to do any damage because of the Protect, and the rain stops here. So, you know, this, if you know, Thunder will not be 100% accurate if it is locked into Thunder. But more importantly, that Sacred Fire is going to be able to do more damage outside of the rain here. And we do have uh, the Regieleki sw swapping in. So the Regieleki, even though it's fast, this Kyogre is in uh, Tailwind right now. So, you know, you still have to kind of stall these turns of Tailwind out to be able to take care of that Kyogre with the Reggie Lucky. Yeah, it was a good target of the Thunder into that Urshifu. Water Spout probably not going to be enough. So now you do get the knockouts. So you've used up the Protect on the Zashin as well. And now the rain is gone. It's quite an interesting interaction there where the Kyogre hit the field for one turn and the rain disappeared because of that earlier rain dance. So uh, yeah, very interesting interactions. Now the Kyogre is Choice Scarfed into that Thunder. You're going to have to risk the, the shaky, ac shaky accuracy that you no longer have. Yeah, Regieleki protects itself this turn. Zashin also goes for a protect, but it fails because of that double protect chance. Water Spout from the Kyogre won't be doing as much damage in the rain, but most importantly, this Kyogre is at full health and will still do a ton of damage. Zashin takes just over half of its HP, though, but if this Entei goes for that Sacred Fire, which it does, this might be able to knock out that Zashin, and it is. So the Zashin now completely off of the field, but the Tailwind is also off the field. So this Regieleki could possibly bring something out here, but I don't know if it's really got enough uh, juice in it, shall we say, for uh, being able able to knock out both of these Pokemon. 
I don't think even a double electro crit at this point would take out both Pokemon. So maybe you have to hope that the Thunderbolt is enough to knock out the Kyogre and then you dodge a Sacred Fire that could come out from the Entei. Uh, but there's most likely going to be at least one 100% accurate move on that Entei and to be able to pick up the knockout. And there's even a Pokemon waiting in the back for Nick as well to be able to deal with it with, with, with that Serena waiting in the back. So yeah, this Regieleki is not in the position it wants to be, uh, even though the Tailwind uh, ha has been stalled out enough so that it can outspeed the Kyogre, which we are we're seeing now it is not Choice Scarf. So uh, having access to Thunder and then being able to swap out into that Water Spout, very beneficial for the Kyogre. Yeah, Serena switches in here. Serena going to be able to stop pretty much anything from this Regieleki at some point. Regieleki goes for the Thunderbolt, goes for that single target move. Serena just absolutely tanks it. Doesn't take really any damage whatsoever. The Sacred Fire from the Ante, we saw this did just under half pretty much, so it is going to be easily enough to knock out the Regieleki here. And that is going to take game one for Nick. I think Alex's big change here is, you know, that Amoongus wasn't doing as much as he needed it to. And I think if you bring something like you know, Rillaboom or another offensive piece because the Pokemon on, um, excuse me, because the Pokemon on Alex's side were so resistant to getting spored, I think it could be a really nice change for him in game two. Yeah, the safety goals on the Entei definitely changes a lot of things coming out here. If you were able to get that spore into the Entei, you take away all the sacred fires that were coming out. So the Entei pretty much just sat on the field the entire time getting those sacred fires off. Didn't do too much to the Regieleki, but it built up enough that it was just able to be knocked out uh, in the future as well. And then you're able to get that Sacred Fire into the Zashian as well to pick up the knockout in combination with the Water Spout. So yeah, the Safety Go is a really nice item choice for the Entei coming out. Moongus, probably not the Pokemon who you want to be bringing to this matchup. It's very good against Kyogre, but when the partner is Serena, Safety Go was Entei and Talonflame, may need to switch it up a bit. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. And also really interesting too, because that Zacian didn't get that double protect at the end, that really was the last option for a win in that game. And if that double protect from the Zacian did go off, you could possibly, you know, go for something like a Thunder and then another move from, you know, a Behemoth Blade or something from that Zacian, able to knock out some, one of the Pokemon on that side or even, you know, a play rough or a close combat. You know, a couple different options there, but, you know, at least he played to his outs. And you have to play to your outs in games like these, especially when your tournament life is on the line for either of these teams. So I still love the choices that he was able to make and still tried to keep himself in the game. Uh, unfortunate that you can't get the double protect every single time as much as we all would like to. But, um, you know, being able to bring in that Amoongus and have it get a spore off on that Entei would have completely changed the game. But now having that really important item reveal is going to be nice for the information for game two. And you've got some nice info here that the Kyogre is not choice scarfed either. So we'll have to see how both these players are going to be going into this game too. Now, uh, we're probably going to need to see some adaptation. Uh, maybe the Amoongus is not going to be the Pokemon brought to this match. Rillaboom is usually a Pokemon that is very strong against Kyogre. You do have to worry about the Serena blocking the grassy glides that come out on, from the Rillaboom. Uh, maybe it not coming to the match means that it's not carrying that extra grass move. Uh, we often see the Wood Hammer or Drum Beating coming out from the Rillaboom to bypass that Queenly Majesty of the Serena. But at the same time, if you do bring the Rillaboom just to be able to beat that Kyogre, you, again, same problem with the Amoongus. You've got to deal with the Serena, the Talonflame, and the Entei, which are all Pokemon Rillaboom does not want to be facing down. So... You do need to find that way through the Kyogre. Regieleki is a very good one, but then it just got chipped far too much in that early game. And then the Kyogre is able to get into the position where it's most likely going to be outspeeding that Regieleki if it is going to be that fast variant uh, so that it can just get that water spout off before the Regieleki attacks. So it's still a little bit of an awkward one. Do you still bring the Amoongus purely to just try and get a Grass Knot or a Spore into the Kyogre when it's on the field? Or uh, the Rillaboom to try and get those Grass moves into the, into the Kyogre? Because you're probably not going to be able to get many Fake Outs off with that Serena uh, sitting on the other side of the field as well. But then you do need some way of breaking through that Kyogre. And if you lose the Sash on the Regieleki and Tailwinds is set up, then Regieleki really isn't your Kyogre any answer anymore. So yeah, it's definitely an awkward one and definitely needs to see some adjustments coming out here. Yeah, and this is one of those games too. You know, that water, um, sorry, that rain dance was really huge from that Regieleki early on, but it did allow for that Tech Kyogre to come in and allow the rain to go out nice and early so it could boost that power of the Sacred Fire. So game two here, we're gonna have to see some interesting changes from both of these players between Nick and Alex respectively. Um, you know, now possibly if you know that Nick is possibly not gonna be bringing that Amoongus, you're gonna maybe make a change knowing that you're not gonna have to worry about getting spored here. We do see from Nick though, the Talonflame and the Serena. So really nice to be able to stop any fake out pressure onto this Talonflame if it goes for something like a Tailwind, but Regieleki and Zacian. So two interesting Pokemon, nice change in the beginning here from, um, from Alex's side. 
Yeah, Zashin as a lead is definitely going to put on a lot more pressure than, than the Amoongus could have done. Uh, you've actually got some damaging potential coming out with both the Regilurki and the Zashin at this point. Uh, Talonflame is facing down that Zashin. We'll have to see how the speeds uh, interact if that Talonflame wants to go on the offensive. We've seen it's the physical variant with the Brave Bird. Could still be having access to the Flare Bits as well, which would do a good amount of damage to that Zashin. But at the same time, you might just want to get that Tailwind set up with the Talonflame while your Gale Wings is still intact so that you can get that Kyogre to be switched in. If you get that Tailwind up, if you can potentially get a U-turn into the Regieleki to break any potential Focus Sashes, uh, that would allow your Kyogre to maybe get into the position to get those Water Spouts off as well. And Regieleki is definitely the best answer to that Kyogre. If you can deal with it quickly, uh, then you may be able to get rid of the main threat to that Kyogre waiting in the back. Yeah, Talonflame goes for a Tailwind though. Regieleki is still faster than the Serena, interestingly enough, is able to get that Electro Web off. Does so much damage to that Talonflame, about three quarters, very little to Serena. So Serena here and Talonflame, most importantly, losing one stage of speed. So that uh, Tailwind only doing about half as much as it would have. This Zashin still also going faster than the Serena here. Goes for a Behemoth Blade into that Serena slot, which is not gonna love taking it. It is enough for a knockout though, with that Electro Web ad additional damage and not having any Intimidate. So losing Serena early, is is really huge because now you can move around a little bit more and not have to worry about maybe you know some priority attacks from your urshifu or maybe even something swapping in with the serena and entei comes out in its place that's a really strong knockout if you've got that rillaboom waiting in the back that frees up your grassy glides so rillaboom can be an answer to that kyoga that could be waiting in the back there and talonflame is on its last legs at this point able to survive an electro web which honestly i think is quite impressive given it's a talonflame and able to still fire off an offensive attack the regieleki needs its sash broken at some point talonflame has stuck around it can do that even if it was just the brave bird as the move uh, offensive move option on the talonflame that's still going to be enough to break that focus sash on the regieleki ready to be KO'd by either the Entei or the Kyogre that could come in at some point. So the Entei is in a pretty good position at the moment. Can get that Sacred Fire down into the Zashin for some really good damage, or get that Sacred Fire down into the Regieleki before a Rain Dance could come out from it, so it would still do the normal amount of damage it would do. We saw it did just under half in that first game. It could be doing a lot more damage in this one. Ooh, we get the uh, Sacred Fire Avoid, though, from that Regieleki. Not going to be taking any damage or a burn chance and keeps that uh, Focus Sash intact. Gets an Electro Web off, is enough to knock out that Talonflame. A critical hit, which would not really matter, as we saw it at over three quarters of the HP. Most importantly, gets the speed down on Entei as well. Zashin's going to go for a Behemoth Blade here. And if you saw a peek behind the screen like I did, it's carrying Wild Charge, which would be really nice for this Kyogre, especially because this Behemoth Blade is so powerful. Gets that Entei down into the bottom 25% of its HP. Yeah, it was a very unfortunate miss from that Sacred Fire. Uh, you'd be able to get some very good damage down into that Regieleki. Instead, you've lost your Talonflame. Entei is now down into the red as well. You've really got to rely on the Kyogre at this point to be able to do the damage at this point. Regieleki is stuck around because of that miss as well. It could have been burns and potentially got knocked out because of the extra damage because there was no rain on the field at that point. Really, now you just get to switch out with your Regieleki, wait for the Tailwind to disappear, and then you can Thunderbolt the Kyogre at some point. Uh, even with the Focus Sash intact, maybe you just feel comfortable going on the offensive immediate with, immediately with the Regieleki. There's no, no damage done to Alex's side of the field at this point, and you've lost two at almost three of your three of your pokemon in return for that just to get this kyogre into position with only really two turns of tailwind to be able to collect those water spouts definitely going to be strong enough at least at this point on the zashin and the regieleki the zashin could be trained to survive that water spout uh, so we'll have to see if that is going to be coming through here because if it is able to survive that water spout you could just go on the offensive with both regieleki and the zashin nt would be able to follow up a ko into one of them but then the other one would be able to get that attack whether that's just to get that extra damage into the nt or some good damage to reduce water spout from Kyogre, but really you could just be switching out here and preserving your fast Pokemon because Regieleki and Zashian here are very fast. If the Tailwind gets sold out, you'll be outspeeding in the future. Yeah, Incineroar switches in here. Gonna get a Intimidate off onto either of these Pokemon. Maybe important on that Entei uh, just because of that Sacred Fire. Excuse me, sorry, Inner Focus. My bad. Entei not gonna be lo lowering any stats there. Regieleki goes for a Protect, just stalling out this Tailwind here. Both of these fast Pokemon. Kyogre gets that Water Spout off. This should be enough to knock out this Incineroar uh, unless it is, for some reason, extremely bulky. But this Incineroar is not gonna take a Water Spout kindly. Most importantly, though, it's gonna allow for... Uh, Zashin to switch back in, maybe to stall out this Tailwind. Sacred Fire won't do any damage to the protected Regieleki slot here, so a very defensive play from Alex. 
You don't really need the Incineroar at this point. It could have got a fake out into the Kyogre to sort a turn. But even if it doesn't survive, you get this switch it into the Urshifu at this point as well. If it's carrying Aqua Jet, that's going to be enough to take the knockout on the Entei at this point. And then you don't need to worry about the Regieleki even switching out to get out of the Tailwind. You'll have your Focus Sash still intact at this point. So uh, if you've got Aqua Jet, just knock out the Entei. Still just go on the offensive with Regieleki. You just need to click Thunderbolt two times at that point. If you don't have access to Aqua Jet, you probably still need to switch out the Regieleki. Regieleki at this point, because this is going to be the last turn of Tailwind. Even if you sacrifice the Zacian, the Regieleki is going to be the more important Pokemon in that endgame, because it's going to be able to do a lot more damage to that Kyogre. And maybe if the Zacian had play rough, it would still be able to do a nice chunk of damage to that Kyogre, but if you don't have that uh, extra coverage move, then Regieleki is going to be your best answer to break through that Kyogre. Yeah, Regieleki actually switches out here, brings that Zacian back in on this field. Uh, possibly, like you said, there is, you know, getting that Intrepid Sword Boost is going to be really important to possibly take out either of these two Pokemon, especially that Kyogre. Urshifu goes for the Wa Aqua Jet here, is enough to knock that Entei out. So both of these Pokemon will only be taking an attack from this Kyogre, even if it is that double target Water Spell, which it is. And this will still do a really nice amount of damage onto that Zacian. It will not be enough to knock out either of these Pokemon, though, as that Zacian lives on just 9 HP. Tailwind finally ends here for Nick. So Alex is in the driver's seat, absolutely, with both of these Pokemon. Pokemon and we, uh, you know, you've got some really interesting moves on that Zacian, but especially that Wild Charge, which does give recoil damage, so we may not see him using it. Yeah, I don't think you need to reveal it at this point. You didn't reveal it in that game one. It's going to be very key information going into the game three, uh, because that is one of the best ways of breaking through the Kyogre that you do have access to on a Zacian. Uh, so yeah, go just going for the Behemoth Blade, playing it safe here. You just need any kind of chip damage on the Kyogre, and you should be put. I'd say chip damage. That did half damage to the Kyogre. <laughs> you're put, then you're putting it in range of the Regieleki Thunderbolt at this point. You don't care if you're losing your Zacian here to the Origin Pulse. Uh, you just need to click Thunderbolt at some point. Yeah, Origin Pulse here will comfortably knock out the 9 HP remaining on that Zacian that was not able to get with that Water Spout in the turn prior. Really interesting to see that this thing is not a choice variant of any sort. So you kind of have to wonder exactly what item this Kyogre is carrying. We haven't really seen anything from it. Uh, could, you know, could possibly be something maybe like an Assault Vest, but... Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure. We haven't seen any leftovers proc, so it's nothing like that Combine variant either. And then a Thunderbolt from Regieleki. This should just handle this game and bring us into a game three. Yeah, and just the Aqua Jet on top just for good measure. Make sure that the Kyogre is definitely in range of this Thunderbolt. So yeah, definitely a good ad adaptation coming out from Alex. Not bringing the Amoongus into this game. Uh, seemed to be uh, working out pretty well. And the Incineroar sacrificing itself even did its job at that point. So it didn't really matter what that Pokemon was. It just needed to be anything that's got KO'd so you can get the switch in into the Urshifu. So very good adaptation coming out here for Alex. Uh, so going to be bringing us into that game three. We're going to have to see if Nick is able to adjust this time. Uh, still bring the, the same Pokemon to the match. Mixing it up by leading with the Serena in the first... Uh, it, uh, leading with the Serena into that game two. Uh, was just KO'd immediately by the Behemoth Blade and the Electro Web. Usually able to survive the Behemoth Blade, but that extra little bit of chip from the Electro Web coming in, uh, cru potentially crucial to be able to pick up that knockout. And then just losing a Pokemon for free. If eff effectively, Nick lost almost three Pokemon for doing no damage at that point. Would have done damage if the Sacred Fire would have hit. Uh, so maybe if that Sacred Fire would have connected with the Regieleki, it would have uh, maybe changed a, a few things. But when you hadn't done any damage at that point, you weren't going to be able to take the game. Yeah, and you know, game three here is still very important. I loved the changes that we saw. I, again, was the first thing I said at the end of that game was Amunga shouldn't come to the next one. And that was definitely the right choice there, uh, especially now that you see, you know, that there's, you know, multiple Pokemon that really this Amoongus doesn't really want to look down at. Uh, we didn't see, excuse me, we saw that Incineroar over the Rillaboom. So another interesting choice of not bringing that Rillaboom, possibly because of that Serena and Grassy Glide. And then also from a Talonflame and an Entei that can still do super effective damage to Rillaboom here. But I loved the lead. I loved Regieleki and Zacian. I thought that put a lot of pressure on really early for Nick and still, you know, made it so Nick might want to think twice about clicking that Tailwind button. So I think Having Regieleki, you know, you know that you can do that super effective damage to that Talonflame, but you can also just slow both of the Pokemon down on that side of the field with the Electro Web and make that Tailwind, you know, work a little bit less than it might have been had you not gotten that one stage of speed drop on both those Pokemon. Yeah, le leading with Amoongus effectively meant you had one Pokemon in that lead because that Amoongus was not really putting on anything. So Regieleki and Zacian 
putting on a lot more pressure onto the leads that could come out from Nick. You've got the Talonflame that could go for that Tailwind and potentially just sacrifice itself. It's able to survive the Electro Web, which is uh, quite crucial as well. You need to go for the Thunderbolt if you want to pick up the Knockout. And we don't even see if it is going to be a Focus Sash on that Talonflame either, which is a potential item uh, that could be coming out, especially if that Thunderbolt does go into the Talonflame on that turn one, it will still be able to get up that Tailwind. So yeah, it's maybe not leading with the Serena because it did just get KO'd by that combination of attacks coming out from the uh, Regieleki and the Zashin. If you leave with one of your fire types into the into the Zashin, or two of your fire types, I should say, because the Talonflame was led. If you go back to that lead of Talonflame and Entei, that's going to be putting on a lot more pressure onto that Zashin. And the Regieleki as well, maybe forcing it to just go for a Rain Dance, and then that's a turn that it's not clicking an electric type attack. Yeah, like you said, for game three, we have two fire type leads and then we have Regieleki and Zashin. So the same leads that we saw from last game for um, for Alex's side here, but Nick switches it up, brings those two fire types, possibly making this Regieleki click that rain dance so that it doesn't get a really a ton of damage from something like from something like a sacred fire here. And Zashin is still gonna have to be pretty careful. You know, it could you know, it could protect, could go for either move here, but it's, you know, it's staring down two Pokemon that can do a lot of damage to it. Yeah, we'll have to see if the Flare Blitz is an option that's on that Tannin Flame. We've only seen Brave Bird at this point, so maybe only the Entei is going to be the thing threatening the Zashian. And just, even if it's not going to pick up the Knockout, you still got that threat of that burn that could come out from the Sacred Fire, which would really, really neuter this Zashian. Which you do want to be doing a lot of damage to your opponent's side of the field. Not really in the best position against the Entei and the Talon Flame. If you get that Electro Web off, the Entei is probably going to still be outspeeding at that point if they click Tailwind with the Talon Flame as well. Uh, so you can't even go for the play that you went for in that turn one by just going for the Electro Web and just a knockout. You're going to have to take some damage here. Yeah, we do see the Tailwind though, and Entei gets that Sacred Fire off first before either of these Pokemon isn't enough to knock out the Regieleki, but it does so much damage, who now gets off this Electro Web. There's still a ton of damage to the Talonflame and the Entei. We saw that uh, amount of damage was mitigated in game one from that Sacred Fire, but now this Talonflame almost knocked out. Entei still took about 25%. Zacian goes for a close combat here. It is enough to knock that Entei out. So this Zacian does not get a Sacred Fire. It does not get burned. It still puts it in a comfortable position moving forward. And this Regieleki is still on the field. Yeah, it is, but the Sash has been broken at this point. Sacred Fire finally being able to connect, but still no burns coming out from the Sacred Fire. It's pretty common that it, it does and it's not able to pick up any burns from the Sacred Fire here, but that's actually an entirely worthwhile sacrifice coming out from the Entei. Because you need to go for the close combat as the option of choice for the Zashian to be able to pick up the knockout on the Entei, that gives you a special defense drop. Now the Zashian can no longer take that Water Spout at full power from the Kyogre. So you get to click Water Spout here and you're picking up two knockouts without any switches. Uh, so the Zashian either needs to protect itself or switch out if it protects. It's still going to be in the position where it's got still got that special defense drop and you can still click Water Spout to pick up the KO. So you may need to be looking at switching out your Zashin at this point. Maybe seeing the Incineroar just switch in and sacrifice itself once again. Uh, the Urshfu switching in would still take a lot of damage, but could be taking a Brave Bird from the Tannin Flame as well. And that combination uh, with the Water Spout taking out the Regieleki could be enough to knock out the Urshifu and still be able to really, really keep the momentum going here because the Kyogre is in exactly the position it wants to be in. Yeah, Talonflame withdraws here. Nick sending out his Serena instead. Serena could comfortably take any real electric type attack here. Zashin also switches out though for Alex. Gonna bring that Incineroar in. Incineroar not gonna be able to do any fake out or any funky stuff next turn because of Serena's Queenly Majesty now on the field. Gets an Intimidate off, but that isn't gonna be all that important because this Kyogre, we already know it's running those really, really strong water spouts. Regieleki goes for a Protect here. Kyogre goes for that water spout. We saw that this was enough damage to knock out that Incineroar just that last game. Game. So losing this Incineroar early might not be the most uh, beneficial positioning for Alex, but it does stall another turn of Tailwind. Yeah, I must say it's quite satisfying for me to just see an Incineroar hit the field and immediately get <laughs> KO'd both games. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, the Regieleki able to make it through that turn at least, but the Serena is in a, a pretty good position now because you get to just do that extra little bit of damage to the Urshifu or the Zashian that could switch in. Both should be able to take a Water Spout at this point. We saw the Zashian was able to survive that Water Spout in that game too, but barely. So Serena just needs to be able to do really any damage to the Zashian as a follow-up. I did take an Electro Web in that game too, so we'll have to see if without that Electro Web speed drop that it would be able to outspeed the Zashian in the Tailwind. You've got to assume that the Kyogre was trained to outspeed a Regieleki in the Tailwind at this point. Uh, if it doesn't, then the Regieleki has that option to go for the Electro Web to try and put the Urshifu or the Zashian faster, but 
if it is trained to be faster than Regieleki, you just get to go for the Water Spout here and pick up a knockout on that Regieleki slot. You may even have to, again, look at the potential of a Double Protect to try and stall out that Tailwind. Uh, because if you do manage to make it through the tailwind with your Regieleki still intact, Talonflame has taken damage here, so it will be it will no longer have access to the Gale Wings tailwind. So you'd be able to take it out with the Regieleki just going for the Electro Web here. And Urshifu is able to survive the Water Spout most likely, but then you've got the potential follow-up of the Serena that could go for any of its grass type attacks, whether that's the grassy glides or the power whips that come out from the Serena. You could even opt for just going for the Thunder into the Urshifu and then just the attack to try and get that little extra damage into the Regieleki with the Serena but we've already seen that it doesn't outspeed in the Tailwinds, so uh, if you do go for that option, you leave yourself open to the potential uh, Thunderbolt that could come out from the Regieleki here, so I wouldn't be surprised here if we just see that Water Spout once again try and take out the Urshifu with the combination with the Serena. Yeah, Urshifu protects here though, not going to want to take any damage. This should pretty comfortably knock out that Regieleki who has so little HP left in that party, and this will force Alex down to his last two Pokemon. Well, you know, last game we saw that he was able to leave that Regieleki and Zacian in the lead pretty comfortably for almost the entire game. Serena's Power Whip here won't do any damage because of that Protect on that Urshifu. Again, another turn of Tailwind down, but there's still a few left to go. So now, you know, Alex is in a really tough position because his Zacian isn't really going to be faster than any of the Pokemon here. And he's not going to be able to go for any sort of, you know, Aqua Jets or anything with the Serena on the field. Maybe going to have to go for a double protect as well. And also, Jamie, I feel like Eject Pack Salazzle would have gotten knocked out right on a switch into a water spout. <laughs> yes, it would have done, but then you want to be ejecting anyway, of course. So, yes, uh, at this point, the Zashin and the Urshifu should both be able to survive a water spout. So you've got to really take your pick of which Pokemon you'd want to KO with the Serena. Uh, you just need to do a tiny bit of damage to that Zashin. We saw it survives on barely any HP. Any attack from the Serena should be able to pick up the knockout. Uh, in combination with the Water Spout, Urshifu, you probably need to be going for that Power Whip as well uh, to be able to pick up that extra bit of damage. And because Power Whip is the grass move of choice on that Serena, instead of the grassy glides that we sometimes see uh, to counteract opposing Rillaboons or use opposing Rillaboons uh, to disadvantage, you do have that shaky accuracy here. Yeah, Zashin protects. Kyogre goes for the Water Spout. We saw that this wasn't able to knock out that Urshifu in game two, so this will still be able to live here. This Serena, though, it had to pick its target if it went for that Urshifu again with something like that Power Whip. That is going to be a nice knockout here, and it does. So that Power Whip targets the Urshifu here. This will be enough to take that Urshifu out of this game. Leaves Alex only with his Zash, and the Zashin's still at full health. But there is still, you know, the problem of it's facing down a Kyogre and a Serena, even if Tailwind is gone, and that Talonflame is still in the back. And Zashin can only target one Pokemon at a time. At least the Tailwind uh, has gone without the Kyogre being a Choice Scarf variety here. So you do know that you outspeed the Kyogre. And we've got that uh, sneak peek at the tech move that was able to be hidden on that Zashin here. Uh, but mm -hmm. it looks like the Kyogre is just going to be scouting up for that. Yeah, this Kyogre protects those. Zashin's Wild Charge, not going to be able to do any damage, and this puts Nick on alert for it. Serena goes for a U-turn, going to do a tiny bit of chip here, but most importantly could send in another Pokemon, even a critical hit that does so little damage from that Serena. Going to send out possibly that Talonflame or maybe even that last Pokemon uh, that we haven't seen yet here for either of these Pokemon. Actually, wait, was it that Entei that got knocked out early on? Yeah, you, you lost the Entei with that close combat drop, which Correct. put you in the position where Water Spouts could just be fired off. Could potentially be in that position going forward, depending on how the Talonflame and the Zashin are trained. Uh, like I said earlier, Zashins aren't tend to be run faster than uh, max speed Talonflames at this point. You could be seeing that Talonflame still outspeeding even without the Gale Wings and getting that Tailwind up. Uh, if you do outspeed with the Talonflame, you just click Tailwind and Water Spout, and that is a knockout at this point. If the Talonflame doesn't outspeed the Zashin, uh, then it's going to be... Coming probably down if to where the Wild Charge is able to knock out this Kyogre and the fact if you have a fire move on your Talonflame as well. Uh, because you need to be able to at least stall out the rain to get that fire move off into the Zashin. Because Serena and Talonflame, uh, at least Talonflame without a fire move, won't be threatening the Zashin too much. So uh, you probably need to be taking out this Kyogre uh, with, the, with the Zashin so that you can try and 1v2 the Talonflame and the Serena. Yeah, that Kyogre, though, not going to be taking any damage. Swaps out for the Serena Talonflame. Goes for that Tailwind once again. So now next Pokemon are faster once more than this Sash. And Zashin goes for a Behemoth Blade, though, into one of these Pokemon here for Nick. This could possibly be a knockout. It will be a guaranteed knockout under this Talonflame. Talonflame has very little HP left. So now that Tailwind is over, but you still have the Serena, and then you have a Kyogre switching back in right as the rain stops. So you get that fresh rain again. 
Yeah, it's pretty good timing for, for most things here. The Talon Flame ended up outspeeding that Sash in. Very crucial here. And now we're going to have to see if we see one of those triple protects coming out from the Zashin. <laughs> Haven't seen one in a good while here. And it is the only way out for Alex at this point. Because you do have that wild charge on the Zashin. Could potentially be not picking up the knockout on that Kyogre. So you really you just need to hope that you can get yourself faster. Uh, even if the Kyogre would protect at that point, the Ky Serena's not really going to cut it. So if you get that triple protect, you're in a good position. But that is still a pretty unlikely scenario uh, for the Zashin at this point, but really what you have to be going for. A full HP single target water spout in the rain is knocking out the Zashin, especially with that extra bit of chip that was done with that U-turn. Uh, so we're just going to have to see here if those protects are going to be coming out for Alex. You know, maybe we could just see this Kyogre go for Origin Pulse and miss three times, but I do doubt it seeing as how well Nick has played this match. Zashin goes for its first Protect, so Protect number one. This will mean it's not taking any damage. Kyogre again goes for that Water Spout full HP. This Serena could go for a couple of different moves, goes for that Power Whip. Again, no damage. So now you have two more Protects left. I don't know the last time I saw a successful Triple Protect, especially on a streamed match. Um, this is going to be, you know, a lot of luck that Alex is going to need here. And even if he doesn't get this double protect in the next turn, he has to hope that for some reason that Origin Pulse was clicked in a mist. Yeah, yeah. You have to get the double protect <laughs> and the triple protect, which is why it makes it so unlikely. And yeah, back, back in my day, Serena had faints. She would have sealed up this end game long ago, but it's <laughs> lost access to that move. Uh, so you do have to just try and hope that your opponent is not going to be going for those protects here. But you did see a potential forfeit coming out from Alex, but there is still a chance you can get that, that, that double protect into the triple protect. Even if it is unlikely, like very, odds are very much against you, there is still a potential to win. You've got to go for your win conditions here. If you get that double protect into the triple protect, you still have the chance. Even though it didn't happen in this case, there was still the potential. So the Kyogre is just going to be able to clean up that game with the water spout. We're not going to see any of those triple protects coming out. Oh, when a critical hit. Now. <laughs> yeah, that critical hit for good measure. That means that Nick is going to win this game in this really nice game three. A really good adjustment from his loss in game two. But most importantly, this means that the Netherlands is currently up 3 nothing over um, New Zealand. New Zealand just needs to tie, but that means, you know, they still have to win four games and they haven't won any yet. So this could be a really interesting uh, section in this group to see exactly who gets to move forward at the end of this week. Yeah, that's definitely going to be some matches to watch. New Zealand versus Netherlands is going to be pretty close now uh, so with that 3-0 advantage for the Netherlands. And a very, very cool game, cool, cool game coming out from both of these players. Uh, Talonflamers and Pokemon you don't get to see uh, too often, but getting its time to shine there, getting that tailwind up ready for the Kyogre and showing the importances of free switch-ins effectively, or as, as I like to say, paid switch-ins because you do lose a Pokemon. But Incineroar just sacrificing itself in that game to uh, allow that switch into the Urshifu that could just get that protect off and the Aqua Jets so that you could seal up that end game. And then the sacrifice of the Entei as well. The fact that it had to be close combat to knock out the Entei and you lost the Entei to get that switch in into the Kyogre meant that you were in the position to just launch off those water spouts. You didn't need to worry about any extra chip damage at that point into the Zashin because it had dropped its special defense. You just get to click your water spout, and that's exactly what Kyogre wants to do. Yeah, and that Kyogre really interesting. I was so curious as to what the item on that Kyogre could possibly be there because it wasn't choiced into anything. It was running Protect, but it didn't run Calm Mind. So the only times I haven't seen a choice Kyogre is when it's running Calm Mind and it's paired with a Mimikyu and it's going for Trick Room. So really nice team here, especially, you know, again, I love the Talonflame. Serena is one of my favorite Pokemon right now. And you know, in this format because it's so good paired with a Kyogre who really isn't going to want to take something like a Grassy Glide and who isn't going to want to get faked out. So great games from both Nick and Alex. Awesome to see, you know, such intense competition moving forward in this group. We are going to take a quick break, though, and then we will be right back with Peru and with France. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 